When you log into Canopy, you are taken to your home screen dashboard. Off to the left, you are going to see the global navigation bar. And yours might look a little bit different than mine. It just depends on what licenses you're subscribed to. But everyone is going to have this global plus button at the top. And when you click on it, you are going to see a whole bunch of quick links to popular things inside of Canopy. So you could click on add a client and it's going to open the window up right here where you can easily add your client and then you'll be able to close it out and get on with your business. If at any time you would like to navigate back to this home dashboard, you can do so by clicking on the canopy symbol here at the top and it will redirect you to the dashboard. So let's take a look at this dashboard right here. You are going to see this first little square is your calendar and this is going to show your calendar that you have synced into Canopy and it is really easy to sync your email which I will show you in just a minute but as you can see you can look forward to upcoming days and see what you have going on today and it's going to sync in real time. The middle window is for tasks here you can see kind of a quick glance of what you have going on, anything that has been um, completed in the last couple of weeks, as well as what you have to look forward to. Down at the bottom, you can see upcoming due dates for any tasks you have going on as well. If you click on view all tasks, it will redirect you to the task dashboard here. Okay, let's head back to our home screen. And there's one more area I wanna show you and that is the links down here. This is a space where you can create quick links to sites that your firm uses regularly. So you can link to outside of Canopy, for example, the IRS or inside of Canopy. So I've linked to a productivity area within the time module. I'll show you how to do that in one moment. Down at the bottom of your screen, you're gonna see an icon with either your initials or a profile picture once you've added one. If you can't see this for some reason, you may need to zoom out in your browser so you can see the entirety of your browser in this window. And you can use a keyboard shortcut of Command minus to zoom out or plus to zoom in on Macs, or it'll be Control minus or plus on Windows. Let's go ahead and click on it and navigate to settings. You're gonna land on your user profile and this is where you can update any of your own personal information. And one important area to pay attention to is the two-factor authentication. So Canopy is gonna require you to use a two-factor authentication every 30 days during your sign-in. It's going to default to whatever, whatever email you have here in Canopy, but you can enter your phone number if you would like it to be text to you via SMS text. Just want to make sure you press this little checkbox that you agree to receive text messages, or you can set up an authenticator if you use an app on your phone. It will ask you to scan this QR code and then you'll follow the directions on your phone putting in this code, and then it will generate a new code for you to put here back onto the website. Make sure you save any changes that you make before you navigate away from this page. Now we're gonna jump up to company. Here's where you're gonna put in any information about your firm. A couple things to know, uh, when you put in your address and if you use the autofill feature, you just wanna double check and make sure that the state populates correctly. When using autofill, oftentimes it will skip over the state. Another thing, when putting in your email and your phone number, you're gonna to wanna to use generic emails and phone numbers either to your customer support or to your main desk. You don't wanna put in your personal information here because it is gonna be customer facing. You can also put in your company website and make sure, again, you save any changes. Up at the top in the next 
tab over are your links. And here's where you can add one of those quick links that sits on your home dashboard. To add a link, you'll go ahead and you'll name it. I'm gonna go ahead and name this payments dashboard copy and paste my link and save my changes. Now when I head back here, you're gonna see I have my link for payment dashboards. And when I click on it, it's gonna take me over here to this payment dashboard, which is in the billing module. Okay, navigating back to settings, we're gonna jump down now to access and permissions. And access and permissions is where you create different permission sets for your users within Canopy. We're gonna go ahead and jump into this defaulted admin permission set. And one thing you do wanna make note of is that you need to have at least one of your users within your firm who uses this permission set as their defaulted permission set. This is because you need to be able to have one person who can assign a permission sets to other users and in order to do so, they need to be using an admin set. You will notice that there are a lot of different features you can turn on and off for your users within Canopy, but we can't do that in this one because it is a defaulted permission set. So in order to make changes, we're going to have to duplicate it. So I'm gonna click on the duplicate button here up at the top and rename it. And I'm just gonna rename this one to um, Teams Copy. Here you can see, you can also change the name here. You can now edit any of the features by turning them on and off using these toggles. So if you would like to turn off an entire module, you can do so by clicking on the header at the top of the module, or you can also just select specific features you would like to turn on and off. You'll notice that when it is gray, it is off, when it is green, it is on. Go ahead and make whatever changes you would like to here and then hit save. You'll see in a minute where you'll assign these permission sets, but know that they live here. You can also always add a permission set from scratch by clicking add permission set. Let's jump over now to account management. Account management is where you are going to manage your subscriptions to Canopy. So you can see how many licenses you have for each module, as well as the option to purchase licenses or more clients from this window. The next tab over is going to house your invoices. Once again, these invoices are going to be for your Canopy subscription, and here you can view your monthly balance um, and total. As well as the next tab over, you can set up your payment method here to pay for your Canopy subscription. The next setting is going to be billing settings. Billing settings is where you set up your own billing settings, and this will be what show up on your invoices to your clients. So you have a lot of different settings you can turn on and off, as well as the ability to set up reminders, either days before the due date, on the due date, or you can set up reminders if they have not paid, um, that will remind them every 10 days after the due date until it has been paid. You can see over here, it will give you a sample of what this will look like when you send it to your client. You also have the option down here to exclude or include specific clients with these rules. Next tab over is Canopy Payments, and Canopy Payments help take the billing experience one step further and allow for an integrated payment experience for firms to manage and clients to leverage inside of Canopy. So firms can offer their clients two convenient payment options, including AHC or credit card, and it's another great way to streamline and unclunk your firm. If you would like to learn more about Canopy Payments, you can go ahead and click this link to learn more. One more thing I'll just go over real quick, which is a newer feature, is managing your QBO integrations. We'll go over your integrations in just a minute, but just a reminder that those live here in the billing settings, and here is where you can either restart your integration, view your integration report, disconnect your QBO integration, as well as start and pause your payments right here. 
We're gonna jump now to custom branding. Custom branding is where you're gonna customize and personalize the branding that shows up on your canopy, especially in the client portal, which is what your clients will see. So you can choose to add a company website, an appointment scheduler like Calendly, you can include custom links. This could be helpful for partner sites as well as whether or not you wanna show a billing tab or show display names on the client portal. The logo is another great way you can customize this experience. You wanna make sure you're uploading either a PNG or a JPEG format. And I highly recommend you click this link here to look at some tips on how to make sure your logo is looking its best when you upload it. You can continue to customize by selecting a color here. If you have custom colors you use as part of your branding, you can enter a hex code here and select that instead. Finally, you wanna to continue to customize this experience. By choosing an image to use on the client login page, you can either choose one of these item, one of these images here, or you can upload your own image. You can have a welcome message, which you can customize, as well as choose what type of template you would like to use. Let's take a minute to look at what this looks like from the customer's point of view. As you can see that when they log in, they're going to see all of the items that you've customized, including that image, your logo, your website information. And as they continue through the client portal, they'll be able to continually see those links and other things that you have put in there that will help make it more personalized for you and your client. We're gonna jump over now to custom fields. Custom fields and tags, which we'll get to in a moment, are great ways to help you organize and keep track of your clients as well as filter them. Custom fields are great for adding specific text, dates, and selection fields to organize clients and track relevant information. So as you can see here, we have an accounting number, cost center, as well as things that might be a little bit more fun like a favorite show. Let me show you what this looks like when you go to add a client. So we'll click on add a client here. You're gonna start with your general info, client details, personal information, and then we'll get to the custom fields, which you'll see all of the ones on this page over here are gonna show up here. You can choose to add what you would like when you're adding your client. Let's look at tags. Tags are another great way to organize they're gonna to help to organize clients into categories. And this is more for fixed organization of clients that's not specific by client. So as you can see here, you can tag clients with specific services that you offer or maybe who the practitioner is that is working with that client. You can even choose to do it by their location. Let me show you in the client list how this is going to help you. So coming over here to the client list by clicking on clients and client list, you're going to see what the client list looks like. And don't worry, in a future video, I am going to go over in a little bit more detail how you get to this client list, how to add clients, as well as a few other tips and tricks. But really quickly, let me just show you what those tags look like. So as I come over here, I'm going to scroll over until I find tags. I can filter by tags by clicking on the little down arrow next to the name and you can see I can either sort from A to Z or I can select any of the tags that we have. So perhaps I just want to see all of my clients in California. I'm gonna go ahead, click done, apply, and here we can see I only have one client in California. If I had more, they would show up here. So that is one of the reasons why you want to use tags. It helps you to organize in a quick and efficient way. But let's head back to our settings. All right, we are now on team organization. Here is where you can see all of the users in Canopy that you have from your firm. You can change their permission sets here and you can see when they last logged in. You can view and manage the clients they're assigned to as well as their teams. I'll show you what that team tab looks like as well. Here you can create teams. One of the reasons to create teams is because when you add new users, you can assign them to a team and automatically they will have access to all of the clients, 
files and information they need to without having to add each of those things individually to the new team member. They will be a part of the team and have access immediately. You can learn more about team organization by clicking on this link and it'll go into more detail on how to set up teams, roles, and other things you might need to know for your users. Okay, we already went over our profile at the beginning, so we're gonna jump down now to email and calendar. So here you can see, this is where you're going to sync your email and your calendar. You can do so by adding an account here. You can choose from one of the many providers that will sync and then go through the process. So if I were to check Gmail, you can then select if you wanna do your email and your calendar. A few things to note about the calendars. You can only have one calendar synced to your Canopy account. So you're gonna to have to choose if you have multiple accounts, which calendar you would like chosen. Another thing you should know is that shared calendars are only supported with Gmail accounts. So Microsoft, Outlook Exchange, and other calendars will not work with a shared calendar. You'll go ahead, select this, and it will prompt you to go through the steps to connect your email. Once you have your email connected, you can manage the settings here, making it available to different team members to be able to send emails or have full permission to your email. Another feature here is the bulk email history. This is a great way to check on any bulk emails you have sent. So you can see right here, it will list the name, who sent it, when it was sent, how many clients, and the percentage of how many clients opened that email, as well as if anyone replied. So this is a great way to keep track of any bulk emails and kind of check up on those things. Now we're gonna jump down to integrations. Integrations is where you can keep track of all of the different services that you can integrate within, to Cana within Canopy. I'll go over a few things you should know. Number one, integrating the IRS. So you wanna make sure that you have a transcript delivery service account before you integrate with Canopy, and you should test pulling a transcript from the IRS e-service before integrating to make sure everything on the IRS site is set up correctly. I'll go ahead and put a link here that will give you more information about the IRS integration. We already touched a little bit on QuickBooks Online, but you can see here, you can manage your QuickBooks Online integration here. And when you click on manage, it will take you back up to the billing settings where you can manage that integration. One thing to note about your QuickBooks Online integration is that you can only have one account per Canopy instance. If you would like to learn more about QuickBooks Online integration, I'll go ahead and put a link here so you can learn more. Here you can also learn more about your desktop assistant for either Windows or Mac, the virtual drive or O drive if you're using a Mac. Finally, we're gonna go into notifications. And just like it sounds, here is where you can manage all of the notifications that you receive from things that take place in Canopy. So for each of these different categories, you can choose whether or not you want to have a badge appear, just like this one right down here, or you wanna receive an email. So let's say that for client requests, I just want to receive an email and I don't need any badge notifications. I can go ahead and turn those off by selecting the box and removing the check mark. You can do that with any of these and it will save that setting for you. If you had any questions that came up while watching this video, let me show you where you can reach out to support. When you click back on your profile picture down here, you can see there is a button right here to chat with support, which will open up a little window right here, and you can chat with them here. You can also reach them by calling this phone number during their open hours. Another great tool is our Canopy Help Center. By clicking on the little graduation cap right here, it's gonna open up all of the different resources that we have for you. You can do a quick search right here for any in-app guides or help articles, or go directly to our knowledge base. The knowledge base is a great resource where you can search and find articles on all of the different features within Canopy, as well as guides for your client 
And anything new coming into Canopy, you'll find in 